Steve N4LQ here. I just finished doing a, a real hack job on the uh, DX60 and I've been running it with an outboard DDS VFO for several years and I've always had the urge to just install it in the transmitter as a standalone unit and um, so I did and I started on this project uh, three or four days ago and I used the Dremel to uh, cut out the hole here for the display and this is the N3ZI kit and um, I added a few switches to control the DDS and this is your VFO tuning right here and um, you got a spot button here to key the VFO without keying the transmitter so you can hear yourself in the receiver and this switch is labeled RIT which it technically is but it's not the same thing as the RIT on a transceiver what that does is um, allow you to see the offset that you've programmed um, so the way you do this is you go into the uh, the menu and you tell it what offset you want so when you hit the key the transmitter frequency shifts or the VFO frequency shifts by that amount so if I set it for 100 kcs uh, when I hit the key, it'll go from a steady state, an on state, of something less than 100 kcs than what I want, and then it jumps up to the operating frequency. So you're not turning the VFO off and on, but you are shifting the frequency of it. And uh, the trick is to rig this up so that when you hit the key, the VFO and the transmitter are keyed at the same time. I'll show you how that works. These are uh, the memories right here and uh, actually I'm, what I'm doing here is going up and down bands. So I got 80 and then 40 and 20 and 15 and 10 and then back down again. And again that's your spot button. So that takes care of the front panel. Uh, on the back Here you can see the encoder that comes with the kit. It's a mechanical encoder. It is very smooth. No need for anything else. Um, then you can see the back of the push buttons. And I'm getting hardware off of Amazon and it is unbelievably cheap. I'm getting uh, packs of 10 of these switches for about four or five bucks. And I just love it. So, I'll take a look underneath here, if I can uh, do this with one hand. So, um, here's your display here, and then this is your N3ZI DDS unit. I've got it mounted with a couple of standoffs. I made up this uh, cable here. To uh, two cables to supply the data to the uh, display and those are my cables going through a hole here in the chassis and on up to those switches. Um, an amplifier is required to boost the signal up from this. Your output comes th from a coax right here and this is my little homebrew amplifier and it's just a scrap piece of circuit board that I've soldered in uh, to this metal plate. Two transistors, simplest thing in the world. Uh, the schematic is on uh, N3ZI's website. There it is. If you want to uh, take a picture of that you can. I use the snipping tool on Windows to do this kind of thing. Just stop the video, get your snipping tool on, and uh, copy and print it. But that's all there is to it. PN222, 2N2222 <laughs> transistors. Almost any uh, MPN 
transistor will work. Uh, it doesn't really make that much difference. But it gives you enough gain to drive the thing. More than enough gain. So my, uh, my signal comes out here. Um, I ripped out the um, crystal sockets and the crystal uh, selector switch since we didn't need those anymore and it was just in the way anyway. And I put this little board in. This, this board right here keys the, uh, the rig. There's three wires going to it in the ground. Um, what we are using is an optocoupler and here it's a PC817 and if I can set this up right here is the uh, diagram for it and it is a LED inside the chip and your uh, your key line simply is broken and fed through this little LED and it's less than 20 milliamps of current so the LED can handle it just fine this is a photosensitive transistor got two leads and this will key the uh, VFO so the transmitter gets keyed through this it lights up and then it keys the uh, RIT on the VFO so when I hit the key current flows through the uh, the RIT line and shifts the frequency of the VFO uh, up to where we want it. Uh, let's see if I can get a better view of the um, PC817. There we go. Um, I just happen to have like a 16 pin socket I think. If I can sort of zoom in on this thing it's not easy. It's only got four pins, so you know, two pins are the diode and two pins are the transistor. And so what I did was uh, disconnect the uh, the key line and bring it this yellow wire into the transistor, and then ran a new wire back up here to the uh, to the key jack. It's pretty well it. Now, what's holding this display in is uh, this pot, drive pot. Worked out just right. I just put some tape over it and put it back in. And it holds this side up. And then I took a <clears throat> piece of uh, bar, metal bar, drilled a hole through it, put it, put it uh, on the shaft here, the shaft coupling. And then that is taped up and then it presses against this so it's supported well. well. There it is. That's actually quite easy. The hard part is making that hole on the front panel. And that I am not very good at but I, I covered up my mistakes by uh, using some label material here. And it's nothing serious but uh, Anyway, that used to say Extel, uh, X1, X2, and X3, and I'll just cover all that up. And the display is just exactly a little bit too big, and I lost a, a couple of numbers here on these, on these knobs. No big deal. So when we come back, I'm going to have it on the air, and we'll see how she works. So we're back now, and we've got the rig <coughs> put together. The DX60 DDS, I call it. You can see down here where I labeled it. Uh, we're showing the transmit frequency here of 7026 kilohertz on 40 meters. And this number here, number 7, tells me which uh, memory uh, I'm using. I haven't worked on that yet. I'll probably make it um, uh, channel number 1. I'll make that 80 meters and 240 and so forth. There are nine memory channels, as I recall. Uh, the rig works the same as it always did, except now uh, we can float around the bands here with the, uh, the VFO. Again, this is the N3ZI kit, and um, this, this button right here uh, activates the VFO, but it does not key the transmitter. And I've got my uh, 
75A4 setting here ready to receive. And so uh, when I push the spot button, you can hear it in there's 75A4. So if I need to zero beat somebody, I'll just use my knob here and tune in on them. Now this this knob is also a switch and if I push it it'll change the tuning rate and I can set that for anywhere from like 10 cycles uh, per click on up to uh, one mega one megahertz or something like that but uh, you just keep tapping it and you'll cycle through these uh, various rates and then to get into the uh, setup you simply hold it in and then scroll up and down through your uh, your setup and you can change the uh, offset here <clears throat> right now it's set to uh, go down 100 kilohertz whenever I hit the key so if I flip this switch this shows me the actual fre current frequency of the VFO 7126 and then when I hit the key, it will da it will downshift minus 100 uh, uh, kilohertz, and I mean one yeah 100 uh, kilohertz, and put me down in the CW band. So the VFO is actually running now. And if I tune the receiver up to 7126, uh, we should be able to hear it. And there it is. And then when I hit the key or hit the spot button, it goes away. So that's a pretty neat feature. Um, so as you key, you're actually shifting the frequency, and you can set the frequency anywhere you want from uh, you know zero to thirty megahertz, and it doesn't make any difference. The keying is just absolutely beautiful. Um, Just real nice quality keying. And let's see, hit the key here. Of course, it's fairly loud, but uh, we're using a, a little electronic TR switch that I built uh, 45 years ago, something like that. And uh, I believe it just has uh, one tube and uh, it's got a tuned circuit in it, a band switch. So I'll just pick it up on whichever band I'm on. Uh, but uh, let's see, anything else here? Um, the uh, power output is right at 50 watts with 150 milliamps. And, um, and so we've got uh, all bands covered here. Uh, full tuning capability with the VFO and it works just beautifully. So there you go. It's been a fun project, and uh, hope everybody enjoys seeing the uh, the new revised version of the DX sixty seventy three.